Worcester comes into the game with a record of 1-0. BW enters the contest with a record of 2-0. And now for your starting lineups, first for the visiting Fighting Scots. At midfielder, number three, Miura Wiley. At attacker, number four, Alexa Mellis. At midfielder, number six, Katie Harvey. At attacker, number nine, Sydney Schuster. At attacker, number ten, Jenny Gorski. At defender, number fourteen, Emma Hambright. At defender, number fifteen, Claire Lehouster. At midfielder, number twenty-one, Ashley Borsma. At attacker, number twenty-four, Caitlin O'Connor. At defender, number 25, Sabrina Skolnick. At defender, number 30, Lauren Hill. And at goalkeeper, number 36, Katie Scheidler. Worcester is coached by Elizabeth Ford. And now for your Yellow Jackets. At attacker from Strongsville, Ohio, number one, Bree Martineau. At midfielder from South Lyon, Michigan, number four, Jordan Paul. At defender from Medina, Ohio, number five, Hannah Stein. At midfielder from Worcester, Ohio, number six, Sid, Sid Chamberlain. At midfielder from Lockport, New York, number seven, Savannah Jekyll. At defender from Strongsville, Ohio, number eight, Christina Rothkopf. At defender from Henyon, New York, number 13, Cassidy Prather. At midfielder from Bluffton, South Carolina, number 16, Nagy Reed. At defender from East Aurora, New York, number 18, Erica Davidson. At attacker from Westlake, Ohio, number 22, Alexis O'Neill. At midfielder from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, number 28, Maddie Ray. And at goalkeeper from North Tondawanda, New York, number 98, Ashley Hildreth. BW is coached by Nicole Shoger and assisted by Heather Coppola. At this time, we ask that all fans please rise and kindly remove your caps as we honor America and those who protect our freedom at home and abroad with the playing of our national anthem. Welcome to Finney Stadium and Trussell Field as we get set for women's lacrosse action here at Baldwin Wallace. A bit of a delay. The game was expected to start at 7 o'clock, but just uh, about a half hour before the game got under, or before practices were going on, the uh, storm <laughs> came through. We had lightning and we had a weather delay. So that is why we are starting uh, almost 45 minutes late. And in reality, this game is just a couple of days late. This game was supposed to have taken place on Saturday afternoon, but the weather was not cooperative. So we are now playing this game here on a Tuesday night as the rains have subsided and 
We are ready for women's lacrosse action as BW comes into this matchup with a 2-0 record. They have defeated Center out of Kentucky 13-7, uh, and they beat Ohio Wesleyan in the opener 13-8. Meanwhile, the uh, Fighting Scots of Worcester come into this matchup with a 1-0 record after defeating Transylvania 15-14. Now, these two teams did meet up last year, and BW came up short in overtime, losing to Worcester 15 to 14. BW coming into this year 2 and 0. Last year they were 9 and 7. Worcester last year they were 16 and 2 on the season. They made it to the North Coast Athletic Conference Championship, but they lost to Denison in that matchup. So on the control draw, it is picked up by BW as they are in their home whites with the gold bottoms. Meanwhile, it is Worcester and the Fighting Scots all in black here tonight from Trestle Field. BW controlling the ball early behind the cage area, trying to get that offense set up as they slide it to the near side. Working it back up on top, that's Bree Martineau. Martineau sliding in to the left. There's a shot that is blocked by Katie Scheidler out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. She has given up 14 goals, and uh, her save percentage is 51% as that ball goes out of play near the midfield line. BW so far this year has scored 26 goals, giving up just 15 on the season with control again here in the first. They'll play it back behind the cage looking for the offense to start up. They'll bring it to the near side. Working it to Maddie Ray, now up top. Passing it around the 12 meter arc. So now the play comes back to the uh, top of the arc. Working it on the white ring. That's uh, Jekyll with it. Playing it back over to Bree Martineau. Martineau looking for a little pick up top. Slides over to her right. Now moves it to with the left hand stick. Still looking for the offense as they have 44 seconds left on the play clock. Jordan Paul with it out of South Lyon, Michigan. Trying to work it inside. Coming up with it is Jekyll. Jekyll working to the right. Sliding through the defense. Now back behind the net. There's a centering pass. There's a shot and another save coming in there by Katie Scheidler. Two saves for her early on in this game. Good attempt that time by BW to slide in there for the shot. Now here comes well, Worcester. Bad pass turnover, and it's picked up by the Yellow Jackets. Here comes Hannah Stein on a big run up the middle to the 12-meter arc. Now to the left, on the left side going in, and she slips on the turf, passes it to the near side. There is a shot right in front, and that goes above the crossbar, and it goes out of play, but it will be BW. What a run by Hannah Stein running down that field and then slipped as she was getting back behind the cage area to try to set up the offense. Yellow Jackets coached by uh, Nicole Shoger in her third year. Martineau inside, shoots low, and she gets the ball into the back of the net as BW gets the lead at one to nothing. And for Bree Martineau, that is her seventh goal of the season. She came into this game with six goals, two assists, and eight points. And she gives BW the early lead with 27.05 remaining here in the first. So BW will take the early lead at one to nothing, 27.05 left in the first half. So Martineau picking up the goal. BW putting a little pressure. Three shots, three shots on goal, and they have one to show for it. BW also 
up one on draw controls as they'll have to redo it again. They'll get it set up once again at midfield in the BW logo here at Trestle Field. Adam Mendoza along with you. Glad to have you along here on BWAthletics.com as the Yellow Jackets once again getting the draw control. They're two, two up on draw controls. Playing it to Paul to the right side to Bree Martineau who scored that last goal. Now the Yellow Jackets trying to work it around close to the 8-meter fan inside the fan area but lots of defenders coming in there to get their sticks and a good check and uh, the whistle will stop the play and it'll be BW ball or make that Worcester ball so we'll have a penalty against BW and Worcester will have a man advantage Worcester with one goal in man-up situations. Fighting Scotch trying to get it on their side of the field as it has been played on their own defensive half. That pass down is picked up by Ashley Borsma out of Ada, Michigan. Working it back over to Caitlin O'Connor. Now they work it to the right side, trying to work in good defense right there. That pass or make it that shot going low and wide right as Ashley Hildreth in in the nets for the Yellow Jackets. She's giving up 15 goals against this year. Once again, a pass inside, that one going high above the crossbar as Worcester coming in, getting it into the slot area right in front of Hildreth. The defense for BW really going to have to check on Worcester and we'll have a foul and we'll have a free position shot on the almost near center at the top there's a shot and a goal as this game is tied at one as that goal was picked up By number 10, I believe that was Jenny Grossman, who came up with the goal. We'll get the official word on who scored. 25-42 remaining in the first half, and this game is knotted at one. Jenny Grossman out of Dayton, a senior. Picks up her fourth goal on the year. Came into the game, three goals, four assists, seven points on the year. BW winning the last two draw controls. And again, they'll pick up the next one. They'll have control of it as Hannah Stein quickly on the restart. Looks over, makes a move to the left. Spins, looks to passes, flicks it off to the right-hand side to Brie Montano. Martino working it down low. Goal line extended to the right side as we look at it. Now the Yellow Jackets trying to play it up on the wing as they send it up top to Martino. Working it around, trying to get near that 12 meter fan, the 12 meter arc area, then to the fan area. Martino working it to the left side. Looking to find somebody cutting through the crease area. As we have 25 minutes remaining in the first half, Game knotted at one. On the attack is Jekyll. Jekyll still with it. Takes a shot and another save there being made by Katie Schneider. Scheidler coming up with another save as she got her stick and net down low. But a turnover deep in Worcester territory. It is picked up. There's a shot and another save there by Scheidler. As Alexis O'Neill got the turnover and was able to go right on goal, but was not able to get the shot as Scheidler out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania, coming in to make another stop. But BW has the ball once again as we are under 25 minutes here in the first half. This game is knotted at one. Martino, who has a goal in the game, plays it to the right side, now slides in and will have a stoppage in play. And 
will have Martineau getting ready for a free position shot just to the right of the 12 of the 8 meter fan area Martineau waiting to attack on that free position shot comes in attack shoots and scores as she bounces it off the turf for her second goal and BW takes a 2 to 1 lead here in the first half of action BW with 5 shots Worcester with 2 shots on goal 4-1 Martineau picking up the goal that is her second of the night, her eighth of the season for the three-year letter varsity winner. 2-1 BW with the lead here in the first half of action and a cool night. The evening started pretty nice and then all of a sudden a line of thunderstorms came rumbling through Berea, Ohio out of the west and it caused a 40, uh, almost an hour delay for the start of the game. This game was expected to start at 7. It didn't get started until 7.45. So this game had its second delay because this game was supposed to have been played on Saturday afternoon. But the snow on Saturday prevented that matchup from happening. Hannah Stein with it. Gets hit hard and the foul goes on Worcester. And the Fighting Scots will give up the ball to BW as Savannah Jekyll with it. Working it to the right side. Lost the handle of the ball. Picked up there by Caitlin O'Connor. And a stoppage in play will give it back to Worcester. Worcester coming in on the year. 1-0 on the season. They are averaging 15 goals a game. The Fighting Scots at 16-2 last year with control of it. Jenny Grossman with it, works it to the right side. She has the lone goal for the Fighting Scots tonight. Clock down to 23 and a half as they try to work a slide inside the middle. Still with control of it, they'll play it up at top at the fan area, working to the right side. That is Katie Harvey. Harvey will pass it out as a good defense by BW, coming in with a good check as they work it man-to-man -man inside the fan area. Now Grossman with it back behind the net. Looks to play it on the right on the left side, goal line extended. They'll play it up at the top. Fighting Scotts trying to go in. There's a shot, and there's a save by Hildreth. Hildreth coming into this game with 19 saves, give her 20 on the year in her third game. 22-40 remaining in the first half. BW with a... 2-0 lead by two goals coming from Strongsville native Bree Martineau. Now the Yellow Jackets going on a good long run. Almost a 40-yard run there as they pass it up top to Chamberlain. Chamberlain looking to pull the trigger, gets it on to Martineau. Her shot in the turf goes out of bounds, but BW is right there to pick it up, getting the ball back behind the cage area. Well, it looks like BW is trying to hit the turf and go low on Katie Scheidler. Nothing really going up top. They may have found something trying to go with the hits, with the skip off the turf. BW trying to work it inside the fan area once again. Martineau looking to pull the trigger on that left-hand pass, going inside, coming back out into the point as they try to work it from the wing area. Inverted offense getting restarted once again. Ball loose, picked up on the ground ball, still on the turf, now picked up by the Yellow Jackets as a couple of battles being made, but it's picked up by Maddie Ray. Back to Martineau up top. Martineau making a good hard run. She'll shoot, she'll score! Martineau once again coming up with the hat trick at the 21-15 mark of the first half. Martineau with three goals, nine on the season. And again, going low and skipping it off the turf as they get by Katie Scheidler as BW takes a 3-1 to one lead. Martineau picking up the hat trick. So BW in early control this evening here at Trestle Field. 
as they have three goals from Bree Martineau, and they lead it over Worcester. 3-1 to one with 21-15 remaining in the first half of action. Waiting for the draw control. It is picked up by Hannah Shaw of Worcester. They'll play it on the far left wing. Goal line extended that side. Now back behind the cage area. Trying to find a cutter going through. Playing it back behind the net. Trying to get the offense started right at the arc of that fan area. Right in front. There's a shot and a goal is made again as Jenny Grossman comes up with her second goal. She was cutting in from the left side to the right side and went low leg against Ashley Hildreth. And the goal will make it a 3-2 lead for Worcester. Or I should say for BW as Grossman picks up her second goal of the night. Her fifth goal of the season. Ashley Borsma getting credited with the assist. That gives her two on the year, along with three goals. That gives her five points on this young season. Worcester has not uh, played on the road. This is their first road game of the year. Last year, they were 8-1 and one away from the home of the Fighting Scots. BW this year, 1-0 and at home, and 1-0 and on the road here. So now the Yellow Jackets coming after the draw control with it on the left side. Martineau with three goals, plays it back, goal line extended, looking to play back behind the net area. Alexis O'Neill trying to find a wing. Now they get it inside over to Maddie Ray, and we'll have a penalty on a hold. And we'll have a free position shot for BW. Free position shots. BW is one of one. Both teams one of one on free position shots. It'll be Maddie Ray. The right side of the arc. She's just going to play it across. Or they're going to actually give it to Bree Martineau on the left side as she waits to attack. Katie Scheidler, she comes in, she'll shoot. There's another save by Scheidler. Her fifth save of the night. Inside the middle, they tried to get the pass, cutting that to Jordan Paul, but was not able to get a clean stick on it. And now Worcester looks to get out of the defensive zone. Another turnover this time as the ball's batted away on the cross stick check. Hannah Stein trying to pick it up. Finally does, gets it into their stick, but there is a good play by the Worcester defender in knocking the ball out of Hannah Stein's stick as here comes the Fighting Scots on a good hard run to the far side, goal line extended, back behind the net. 19.48 remaining in the first half, 3-2, Yellow Jackets lead, going inside, good defense on the double team as the Yellow Jackets getting a good defensive play by Cassidy Prather out of Penyan, New York, but then they turn the ball over to the Fighting Scots. With it is Ashley Borsma, who got the assist on that last goal. We will have a timeout. 19-24 remaining in the first half of action. BW leading it 3-2. Tonight's Yellow Jacket women's lacrosse game is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings in Medina, Strongsville, and Warrensville Heights. Buffalo Wild Wings, the ultimate place to get together with your friends to watch sports and eat wings. Tonight's game is also being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. By Papa John's Pizza in Berea, the official pizza provider of BW Athletics. You can give them a call at 440-891-1900 or go online at papajohns.com. And by the Oswald Company for all of your insurance and risk management needs. Adam Mendoza along with you here from Trestle Field on the campus of Bolden Wallace University. BW leading at 3-2 to two with 19.24 to go in the first half of action. Three goals by Bree Martineau, two goals by Jenny Grossman as it is a BW lead of 3-2 to two here in the first half of action. So it's Martineau 3, Grossman 2, and let's see how the remainder 
of the second half will go on as the Yellow Jackets had uh, a couple of goals straight, but then Worcester was able to come back and cut it to within one here at BW. So far, shots in the game, BW with nine, Worcester with four, but shots on goal, BW with eight, Worcester with three. Katie Scheidler with five saves in the game, Ashley Hildreth with one. On draw controls, BW winning that battle 5-1. to one. Both teams with five turnovers each. So as we get ready to restart this second part of the first half, coming out of the timeout, it will be Worcester with the ball. So the Fighting Scots will have an opportunity to try to tie this game as we'll have a restart from behind the cage area. Ball back in play now. Fighting Scots in all black. Going right, uh, left to right as you're looking at it. Grossman, who has two goals in the game, lays it off. Trying to get it in the middle, but good defense there. Hannah Stein now coming up on the defensive side. Playing it on the near side over to Alexis Mellis. Mellis looking in, looking for a cut. There's a drive. There's a shot. Nope, the ball's taken away as it was Alexa Mellis coming in inside the fan area. And with the foul, it'll be a free position shot for Alexa Mellis out of Wexford, Pennsylvania. Officials getting everybody set outside of the 8-meter fan area. Mellis getting ready from the top against Hildreth coming in. She'll shoot, she'll score. Game tied at three. So Mellis picks up her second goal of the year. Two goals, one assist, three points for Alexa Mellis. And this game is all tied at three. Eighteen fifty remaining. And that was the time of the goal for Worcester as this game is knotted at three apiece here in the first half. It'll be Maddie Ray on the draw control for BW. Along with Hannah Shaw, she has won 23 draw controls. Referee once again getting the ladies set for the draw control. It will be picked up by Hannah Stein with control of it on a run to the near side of the field. We'll play it up over to Maddie Ray, back down on the left side, the Chamberlain. Behind the net area looking for a cut. There was a an attempt by Jordan Paw, but was not able to get a full shot. It kind of like just flicked off the off the basket area. But there's an intercept by Martino. Martino charging, shooting, scores. Martino with four goals on the game as she comes up with the intercept. Charges into the fan area and puts another one into the back of the net. And BW takes a 4-3 to three lead as Martino with four goals on the night. Ten goals on the season with two assists. That gives her 12 points on the young season in her third game here at BW for the senior out of Strongsville. So Martino again getting a turnover and turning that into points for BW. BW with eight shots on goal, four of them going into the net as Maddie Ray getting ready for the draw control against Hannah Shaw. And it will be picked up by Hannah Stein. She gets taken down to the turf and on the foul will have BW getting the quick restart. 
Stein playing it to the near side to Maddie Ray. She'll send it across up top to Bree Martineau, who has four goals on the evening. Nice pass in the middle. There was a play, but the defender for Worcester was able to knock the ball out of the stick of Sid Chamberlain as she was right in front of the goal crease. Now Worcester trying to get it out of their own defensive end with 17.45 remaining in the first half. Worcester trying to make a long counterattack run. And on the drive still with it is Grossman. Grossman will play it back, but the defense for BW coming up and trying to get that turnover, picking up the ground ball are the Fighting Scots. Alone on the right side is Maria Wiley. Wiley, right side, looks to pass it in the back as they'll set up the offense once again with 17.20 to go. BW cutting off the lane inside the fan area. Back up top, Grossman has a couple of goals for the Fighting Scots. She'll play it off to Alexa Mellis. Mellis working up top, moves to the right, passes it off over to Wiley. Wiley looking to go in, looking for a pass, trying for a cutter inside the fan area. Plays it to the right wing over to Caitlin O'Connor. Clock under 17 minutes to go here in the first half. BW with a 4-3 lead. Ball loose on the turf. Giving chase is Jordan Paw of BW. She'll come up with it. She looks to get it out of the defensive zone. Gets it back to Hildreth. Hildreth looking to go down and flicks it over to her teammate on the near side. Looking to get out of the defensive zone area. And that is Hannah's, or make that number eight. Christina Roscoff back to Stein. Back over to Hildreth. 16.20 to go. First half, BW with the lead. Hildreth with still in control of the ball. Looking downfield, can't find anybody. She's trying to make a clear out. She's going to have to do it pretty soon as she slowly works it up. Hildreth still in control of the ball, looking for Stein, but there's a double team on her. Hildreth now finding a player, getting the pass off to Savannah Jaco. Couldn't get it, but Martineau picks up the loose ground ball. Jaco now back over to, uh, she'll get it on the near side on the pass from Brie Martineau. On the left side over to Maddie Ray. Ray looking to go, goal line extended near side, plays it back as she spins, slides it up over to Savannah Jaco. They'll move it to the right side and they'll get the offense. Ball gets away and it'll go out of bounds and it will be Worcester fighting Scott Ball with 15.29 to go here in Quarter in the first half of action, BW with a 4-3 lead on four goals by Bree Martineau. Now on a quick counter attack, loose ball, ground ball picked up by Hannah Stein. She has got great speed as she runs down that right side of the field. Looking to go on the wing area. Now goal line extended right. Looking back to first, any teammates trying to cut through. Now Maddie Ray has it. Ray looking in, plays it on the wing. She'll stop and back off, looks to make a move, flicks it way out on top, bad pass, errant pass. It'll go, and a hard hit. It'll be BW as Nagi Reed, the freshman, got taken down hard on the play. Reed out of Bluffton, South Carolina. On a quick play inside, and ball just before the end line. It'll be Worcester ball with 14.35 left in the first half of action. Adam Mendoza along with you here on the BW Yellow Jackets Sports Network. Glad to have you along on this uh, pseudo-warm evening. We had the uh, thunderstorms move through the area earlier in the night. That caused a delay in the game, so... Snow on Saturday caused a postponement and a delay by lightning tonight caused a 45-minute delay. But we are now in full action as Jordan Paul with it and BW leading at 4-3. Paul working it up on top and a stoppage in play. And we'll have a timeout called by BW. 14-01 remaining in the first half of action. Tonight's Yellow Jackets lacrosse game is being brought to you by Jimmy John's in Middleburg Heights. We're freaky fast, so your sandwich arrives freaky fresh. Call us at 440-625-0745, or you can go online at jimmyjohns.com. Tonight's game is also brought to you by the Crown Plaza in Middleburg Heights. When you're looking for a quality place to stay before or after any Yellow Jacket event, 
choose the Crown Plaza. And by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the health care provider of Bolden Wallace University. Congratulations, speaking of uh, Bolden Wallace University, the women's basketball team winning the OAC championship game against John Carroll, which earned them a spot in the NCAA Division III women's basketball playoffs. And they have the uh, honor to host the first round this weekend here at Ursprung Gymnasium. Uh, games will be this weekend on Friday and Saturday. The Saturday uh, final two of the region area will be played at 6 o'clock at Ursprung Gymnasium. There'll be a doubleheader on Friday night here in Berea as the NCAA in Division Three getting underway. So unfortunately in the OAC only one representative on the women's side. John Carroll had a great year this year and uh, they were not able to get a bid to the big dance in Division Three, but the Yellow Jackets, by their win over John Carroll in the conference tournament, assured them of an automatic berth as they will get ready to host this week this weekend at Ersprung Gymnasium. You can get all the information concerning this weekend's NCAA playoff action at uh, bwyellowjackets.com. 14.01 remaining in the first half of action. As we get set for the restart, it'll be BW just outside the 12 meter arc area as they reset the offense. BW on the year, 12 goals in the first half in two games. Playing it back behind the net area. Looking for somebody cutting through. Good defense there by Worcester. Worcester last year, 16-2 on the year. Jacob with it up top. Looking for a pick, looking for a cutter. She'll continue to have the ball. Plays it to the right side now. Looking back behind the cage area. Inside the fan. There's a shot, and that goes wide left. And it will be Worcester ball with 13-15 to go here in the first half of action. BW up 4-3. to three. Bree Martineau with four goals in the game. Long outlet pass over the head of the midfielder, and it is picked up by BW's Christina Roscoff. Roscoff playing it to Hannah Stein, who's had a little bit of trouble with the wet turf and slipping a couple times. Now Jordan Paul has it up top, works it to the right side. Just outside the fan area, now on the wing. She'll play it back behind the net area to Bree Martineau, looking to get the offense started from the backside on that invert. Looking for a cutter, trying to get Jackal. She was open right there, but not a good pass. Stein is there to pick up the ground ball. Stein now off to Martineau on the wing. Not a clean handoff there, playing it back. BW trying to find a cutter. Chamberlain trying to cut through the fan area. And it'll stay with BW as the ball goes out of play. 12-10 remaining. First half action. BW with a 4-3 lead. Grossman for Worcester with two goals on the night. Chamberlain with it far side of the field. Up top, they'll work it to Bree Bartno. Gray off to Jekyll. Jekyll trying to go left side, tries to slide, triple teamed right there on the defensive. In the middle, there's the pass, trying to get it to Chamberlain, but she got cut off, and she has to bring it outside. BW was able to find that cutter, but the Worcester defense just right there on a double and triple team. A little side pass there by Maddie Ray to Martineau. Martineau going in, throwing that as they tried to get that before the play clock expired. And it will be Worcester ball. Good defense there by the Fighting Scots. Really cutting off any type of uh, shot opportunity for BW. BW out shooting 11-5 the Fighting Scots. 11 minutes even remaining in the first half. Pass to the left side of the cage. 
Trying to work it in the fan. There's the double team by BW. Mellis, right side. We'll play it on the wing over to Wiley. O'Connor with it, trying to work it on that wing, trying to find a cut. She spins. Another good defensive play by Hannah Stein as Ashley Hildreth comes up with it, and she lost a handle, and we got an open cage in the middle. There's a shot and a score being made by Alexa Millis as Ashley Hildreth comes up with a big mistake trying to take it downfield, and then the ball was taken out of the cage area as Hannah Stein is talking to her and saying, don't worry about that. There was an open cage there, and the Worcester Fighting Scots tie the game at four. Hildreth, the junior, making a critical mistake as Hannah Stein is trying to rest ashore her goalkeeper there in the nets, and she's feeling pretty bad right now about losing the handle of the ball, but Hannah Stein... The leader that she is out of Medina telling her that it's okay. Now Ashley Hildreth will just have to forget about that play and now guard the goal like nothing happened. 10-26 our score. It is 4-4. Four to four. And we'll have an infraction. As the wind kicking up a bit here at Trestle Field, the infraction on the draw control, and it'll be taken by BW as Maddie Ray will go on a run facing a double team, playing it off to Chamberlain. Good defense there. Bad pass as it goes through the stick of Nagy Reed. Hannah Stein fighting for it. She'll try to pick up the loose ground ball. There's Bree Martineau, but it's picked up by Grossman. Once again, loose on the turf. We'll have a penalty. It'll be a Worcester ball. Four fouls for Worcester, one foul for BW. Quick pass up in the middle on an open look is Hannah Shaw. Shaw looking to go left side to Caitlin O'Connor as the ball gets away from her, but she'll pick it up before it goes out of the end line. 9.35 to go. 4-4 tie. Worcester looking to get the lead. Pass in the middle off the stick. Hildreth comes up with it. Hildreth getting attacked. Playing it over to Maddie Ray. As they work it downfield, ball slips out of the stick of Cassidy Prather. And she'll play it back as BW trying to get it out of the defensive zone. Long pass up ahead to Nagy Reed. Reed lost the handle. It is picked up by O'Connor of Worcester. Fighting Scotch trying to counter, trying to work it into the attacking zone. Lauren Hill, out of Liberty Township with it, plays it over on the right side to Katie Harvey. Harvey playing it back up top. Grossman with it. Looks to start the run. On the right side, looking for a cutter. Plays it back behind the cage area as they invert the offense. Working it to the left side in the middle. Hannah Stein right there along with Ireland Flores Rays coming up big to make the defensive play. Worcester ball once again. Quick restart in the middle. Ball loose in front of the cage area. And we'll have a free position attempt by Worcester. They could take their first lead of the game. It has been all BW with the lead or Worcester tying the game. And on the free possession shot will be Caitlin O'Connor. O'Connor at the top against Hildreth. Waits for the whistle. Play resumes. There's a shot goes wide. It'll be Worcester ball once again with 8-10 to go. Quick on the restart. Fighting Scots trying to work it on that left side of the fan area. Now up top. Looking to go in, but there's the defense of the Yellow Jackets cutting off any move in the lane. Coming in, there's a shot right in front. We're going to have a penalty. And they will 
will not call the penalty. Referee puts it back in its pocket. But Worcester still with the ball. Schuster with it. Right side, looking in, getting cut off. Defense for BW very, playing very, very well, trying to cut off that short attack as Worcester really likes to attack just outside the goal circle. 7.25 remaining. We'll have another free position attempt. Worcester 2 of 3 on the night. Hildreth getting ready on the defensive side. Passing over to the near side of the 8-meter uh, fan area. Looking to play. Ball knocked out of bound, knocked out of the stick. And we'll have another free position shot attempt by the Fighting Scots. 7.15 remaining. First half, game tied at four. Getting ready on the restart once again. Fighting Scots. Double team effort. Stein and Jordan Paw taking down the Worcester player. And it'll be another attempt for Alexa Mellis out of Wexford, Pennsylvania. Mellis makes a move. The defense for BW going in. She's going to go top shelf, and she'll find the back of the net as Worcester takes its first lead of the game at 5-4. to four. Mellis picks up her third goal of the night, so she has the hat trick as it is a 5-4 to four Worcester lead. First lead for the Fighting Scots in this evening's game. So now on the draw control, Worcester has scored the last two goals. Two unanswered goals by the Fighting Scots. And they have taken the lead with 7.09 remaining in the first half at 5-4. to four. We'll have the ball go to Worcester after the draw control. Wiley quickly on the restart. On a big run on the right side. Playing it back over to Borsma. As they invert the offense, trying to work it back behind the cage to the left area. On a quick turn, trying to slide through. They'll play it to the wings, looking for a cutter. Mellis, back up top. Little stutter step move. Mellis will get it back over on the top left of the 12-meter arc. Looking for cuts inside the fan area. Trying to get it from the wing. Back behind the net area. Trying to work it to the far side. Now cutting back in. Looking for a close shot. And another goal by Worcester. As this one is picked up by Caitlin O'Connor. She got it on that left side of the fan. Not too far. Maybe about five yards away from Ashley Hildreth. Made a quick turn. And was able to put it back into the goal. And now Worcester has a two goal advantage. At 6-4. to four. BW had a 3-1 advantage early on. Then Worcester was able to tie that at 3. BW took a lead at 4-3. to three, And now Worcester with three unanswered goals to take a 6-4 to four lead with 6-14 remaining here in the first half. And they scored two goals within a span of 59 seconds. So BW needs to stop the hemorrhaging right now as they are down 6-4 to four here in the first half of action. Hannah Shaw on the draw control along with Maddie Ray picked up by Hannah Stein. Stein putting on the Jets inside the fan area. She'll shoot and bounces it over the crossbar as she made a great attack on the net. 
She tried to bounce that one home and too hard of a bounce. Now here's another one and a goal by BW as they got the cut right in and they cut the Worcester lead to six to five on a beautiful pass inside the slot area there to Caitlin Raddick, the freshman out of Olmstead Falls. Alexis O'Neill, the sophomore out of Westlake, getting the assist with all fives on the board. 5.55 remaining. Worcester has it. A 6-5 to five lead as the Yellow Jackets finally stop the three-goal unanswered streak by the Worcester team on a beautiful cut coming up the middle in the crease area. And the Yellow Jackets have cut the lead at 6-5. to five. Could this be similar to last year's game where it went into overtime and Worcester was able to take the win last year? They won it 15-14 to 14 in overtime. Worcester with the ball in the attacking zone. Looking on the inverted offense, playing it back over to the left side. There's Hannah Shaw, gets cut off. Good defense there by BW. There's another shot and another goal as they could not stop Ashley Borsma, who was right in middle of the front of the uh, goal crease area and was able to put that one in. And it's back to a two goal lead for Worcester at seven to five. So Worcester answers back with a goal to take the two-goal lead with 5.33. Only 22 seconds went off the clock after BW scored, and it is a 7-5 fighting Scott's lead here in the first half of action. 12, 12 goals scored in the first half. BW this year has given up 10 goals in total in two games. Hannah Stein now with it, looking to make an attack run. She'll turn it back over to Maddie Ray, plays it to the right side to Martineau. Martineau looking on the wing, attacking, stopping, gets pushed off, still has control of the ball, flicks it over up top to Jekyll. Jekyll inside, looking to go around, Plays it back off the wing, back goal line extended right. Now they'll move it back behind the cage, goal line extended left. On it is Paw. Getting it off to Jekyll. Jekyll getting cut off there as she tried to get it to the wing side. Now looking for a cut inside. There's a left-handed shot and another save as this one is picked up by Katie Scheidler. Another dead-on shot by BW, and Scheidler comes up with another save, and... Ground ball is being picked up in the midfield area there by BW. Or make that uh, Worcester on a run, working it to Caitlin O'Connor. Katie Scheidler with seven saves in the game. There's a shot and another goal, and it's back to three-goal lead for Worcester as they get in, and they're finding a hole in Ashley Hildreth as she got that ball right in as they went low left. Uh, low right side as we look at it and now Worcester with an 8 to 5 lead goal was scored Katie Harvey out of Ellicott City Maryland the junior her second goal of the season Eight to five, Worcester. BW had tried to cut it within a couple of goals, but now Worcester has extended that lead to eight to five. BW looking to keep their perfect record at home. They are one and zero oh at home, one and zero oh on the road, two and zero oh on the season. As Hannah Stein gets hit hard and taken down to the turf, and the Yellow Jackets will get the restart. As Stein plays it over to Maddie Ray. Playing 
it up top. Jordan Paul off to Martino. Over to Savannah Jaco. Inside shoots another beautiful save by Katie Scheidler. It's like she's got a vacuum cleaner inside the goaltender net there and is able to suck up anything that comes near her as she comes up with her eighth save of the evening. Quickly downfield, Borsma with it. Looking to play back behind the cage to set up the offense. Clock down to 350. Inside the lane, there's a shot going top shelf on a nice goal by Alexa Mellis. Mellis came in crossing through the crease area and was able to get a goal in there, and it's a 9-5 Worcester lead. Mellis now with her third goal of the game, and it is a 9-5 Fighting Scott lead. So the defense for BW is going to have to come up, and we are going to have a change in net for BW as Ashley Hildreth will be taken out in the first half and the freshman Kylie Bliss will go into the net. Tough night for Ashley Hildreth giving up nine first-half goals. But Wiley now on the attack, going in against and looking to really make things happen against the freshman, Bliss, out of Fenton, Michigan. And it seems for Ashley Hildreth, after that miscue where she got the ball taken out of her stick and gave up the open net goal, things just did not go well for her tonight. There's another shot and another goal as... Now Worcester doubles up BW 10 to five as they pepper Bliss, the freshman goaltender for BW. And it is now 10 to five as Bliss getting inaugurated here in Division Three soccer, or I'm sorry, Division Three lacrosse. Ten to five, Worcester with the lead, and they've scored three straight goals after the or four straight goals after BW cut the lead to six to five. Four straight goals by the Fighting Scots. Heldreth on the far sideline for BW was talking to the coaching staff and. Now she's just working on technique on that sideline. Maybe we'll see her in the second half after they give her a little bit of a rest here with 3.14 to go. Worcester now playing with the tilted field to their side as they have been putting a lot of pressure on BW, and that shows with a 10-5 lead. Borsma playing it back behind the net area as they start the offense. A little flick over to the near side to Mellis. Mellis trying to get look for that left pass. Now getting it to Wiley. Long time on the shot clock still remaining for the Fighting Scots. Worcester with four straight goals after the Yellow Jackets were able to cut it down to within one. Grossman with it on the right side. Back behind the cage area. They'll work it to the far left. Looking for a cut inside and another goal by Alexa Mellis as that play has been working to perfection for the Fighting Scots. They'll play it back behind the net. They'll look for somebody cutting from the left wing right in front of the goalie circle area and the goal crease. And they have just been running that play to perfection all night in this first half and have taken an 11 to five lead over BW. BW had the lead early in the first half. BW had the lead at 4-3 to three at the 18-16 mark. And then it has been all Worcester with eight goals since then. And again, Worcester on the attack. 
tilting the field to their advantage. BW has been playing on its heels in this first half, in the latter part of the first half, finding themselves down by six now. They need to stop the bleeding right now and get the ball out of their own defensive zone because they have been playing a lot of defense on this team against Worcester. That was 16-2, and two, and now they come up with a turnover. On the near side is Jordan Paw. Plays it out to Stein. Up ahead, Prather to the far right side. Now on a run. Is Caitlin Raddick. She has a goal in the game. They'll play it as they start the offense behind the cage area as Bree Martineau with it. On the near side to Oni or make that to Maddie Ray. Ray inside. She rifles one into the back of the net on the low stick side of Katie Scheidler as she came in on a sidewinder and put that one and ripped the cords of the net. And that cuts the lead down to 11 to 6. Boy, she really rifled that one. The goal by Maddie Ray, the sophomore out of Revere, her fifth of the year. Two assists, seven points on the season. And that goal by BW stops five straight goals by the Fighting Scots. Let's see what BW can do in the final 123 here of the first half. Eleven to six, draw controls in favor of BW, make it twelve to six, but on the board it's an eleven to six lead for the fighting Scots of Worcester. BW trying to get maybe one more goal in the final minute and 10 seconds as Hannah Stein racing in, looking for a cut, couldn't find anybody. Clock down to a minute. Martino with it, plays it on the near side to Jekyll. Jekyll trying to come in, but the good defense there by Worcester. You see him pack it inside the fan area. Now on a drive, there's a shot and a score! by BW, and the goal is by Alexis O'Neill, the sophomore out of Westlake. O'Neill with the goal, her first of the night, and for Alexis O'Neill, that is her fifth goal of the season, gives her seven points as she has two assists in the matchup, and the lead is cut down to 11 to seven, a much needed goal for BW with 48 seconds remaining in the first half of action as they just need to boy they would love to get another goal within the last couple of minutes of this first half to cut it to within three as they're down by four right now on the control was Bree Martino as they change it up a bit and the ball on, on the pickup is Katie Harvey now in the double team trying to get it in as the defense for BW pressing a bit more and BW will have it with the final 35 seconds to go BW trying to make a last ditch effort as they have it with 27 seconds now they turn the ball over Worcester has it with 18 seconds. Grossman, right side, looking for somebody in the slot area. Grossman behind the net, plays it to that left side where they love to go in and attack. In the middle, ball gets away, loose on the turf. And that is going to be it for the first half of action. One half is in the books. BW with a deficit as they go into the locker room down 11 to 7 here at Trestle Field. It is halftime as BW down to Worcester 11 to 7. We'll step away for a moment here at halftime.
as both teams get ready for the second half, let's take a look at some of the numbers in the first half of action. BW with 17 shots to 15 for Worcester, but the shots on goal still BW with 14, 12 by Worcester, and the saves only one by the Yellow Jackets, seven by Katie Scheidler in the first half. BW with 12 draw controls, seven for Worcester. Hannah Stein has six draw controls tonight in the game, and she became the all-time leader in draw controls at Baldwin Wallace this evening when she picked up her sixth, sixth draw control. Both teams even at 15 in turnovers, and 7-5, to five, BW leading it in fouls. Bree Martineau with four goals for BW, Raddick with one, O'Neill with one, and Ray with a goal. But for BW, Alexa Mellis with five, Grossman with two, Bozma with two, Wiley and Harvey with a goal each. Assists on the evening for Grossman and Borzma. And for BW, Alexis O'Neill with the lone assist this evening. As BW looks to get back into this game 11 to 7 after BW went up 6 to 5, or when Worcester went up 6 to 5 after a BW goal, Worcester was able to score five straight goals. Then, Bush, uh, then BW was able to score in the final 129 two goals to cut the lead to 11 to 7. So as we get ready for the draw control, as the ball's lifted up in the air and picked up by the Fighting Scots, Katie Harvey. Worcester now will be going right to left. Quick pass over to Hannah Shaw on the near side to Mellis. Mellis with a couple of goals in the game. BW needing to shore up the defense. Ashley Hildreth back in between the pipes for BW. Getting a little bit of a break in that first half. She'll a shot there and she'll come up with a save as Worcester comes up with the ball. So Hildreth comes up with a big save and that's a good way for her to start. Good confidence factor getting that first save on a shot. Worcester very good inside. There's a tight play and we'll have a free position play for the Fighting Scots just underway in this second half of action as Worcester leading it 11 to 7. On the free position shot will be Alexa Mellis. Mellis coming in on the attack. She'll shoot. She'll go top shelf as she goes upper right 90 for the score on the free position shot and it's a 12-7 lead as Worcester starts the second half of action with a goal that coming 53 seconds into the second half of play and it is a 12-7 fighting Scott lead over BW once again we were talking about it earlier as the women's basketball team will be hosting the first and second round NCAA Division III tournament games at Ersprung Gymnasium on Friday and Saturday as BW will be the host school as the Lady Yellow Jackets getting an invite after winning the Ohio Athletic Conference Championship in the tournament against John Carroll University to get another trip to the big dance in Division III. After the draw control picked up by Worcester, Fighting Scots still with it putting a lot of pressure, getting it on the near side, looking for Caitlin O'Connor. Playing it back behind the, behind the net area, trying to go close to the crease area. Trying to get battled off, now in front, tries to get the pass. I think it, the pass even surprised Katie Harvey, thinking that it was going to be a shot on the near side post. Worcester will get it. Good check right there by BW's defense, cutting off the lane. Grossman plays it back over to Harvey. Harvey lost the handle, waiting for it, picking it up is Chamberlain. Chamberlain looks to go for a counter, but got the ball taken out on a good stick check. 
Now here comes Alexis O'Neill, right side. Little push on the defensive side there. Good defense by Worcester. Pass up top is Jekyll. Jekyll inside, tries to go, and that goes to the left side of Katie Scheidler as that shot goes low and wide left. But BW with control of it as we are in the 27-45 uh, mark of the second half. Jekyll battling the ball as it's picked up by Grossman on the ground ball pickup. Grossman trying to get away from Bree Martineau. Passing it over to Wiley. Wiley, boy, what speed running to that right side. Unattouched as she goes in the middle. There's a, a pass as they tried to get it to Hannah Shaw. And uh, we'll have the free position shot now for Worcester. Anna Shaw getting ready. Hildreth hoping to stop. Shot goes right between the wickets and goes in net. 13-7. to As Hildreth going over to talk to the coaching staff. Trying to get some assist on the positioning. As in the many games that I've seen here for the Lady Yellow Jackets, um, this is really the toughest for Ashley Hildreth in a game. Confidence shaken a little bit, but she's a tough kid. Only a junior out of North Tonawanda, New York. Two varsity letters. She'll get things straightened out, but the defense has to help out as well as they are allowing too many shots just outside of the crease area. Draw control picked up by Hannah Stein. Stein, the all-time leader on draw controls. Ray trying to slice her way through the defense. Up top on a hard charge. Gets the triple team, flicks it off to Bree Martineau. Martineau on a good pass on the wing. Looking to go right side, trying to fire a shot. And they're going to call the offensive charge against BW. 13 to 7 our score. BW down by 6. Grossman on a good long run and a charge. Nice pass as they flick it to Mellis. Now to a driving wing. Now back behind the net area as they look to invert the offense. Playing it on the near side. Borsma. Playing it back left, looking again in front. There's a save dead on as the shot by Borsma was saved by Ashley Hildreth. And again, Worcester getting near that crease area. The defense for BW is going to have to tighten up and not allow any attack right there. Bad pass, bouncing around, still on the turf, and finally picked up by Martineau right there. She'll scoop it up. Martineau. Will look O'Neill to the right on the wing. Errant pass, loose ball, turned over, picked up. O'Neill. O'Neill inside, left shot goes down on the turf and crosses the goal line for a goal for BW. That'll cut the lead to 13 to 8 as long as the goal stands. O'Neill picking up her second goal of the game, and BW cuts the lead to 13 to eight. Alexis O'Neill now with six goals on the year, along with two assists, eight points on the young campaign for the sophomore out of Westlake, Ohio. 13 to eight our score as BW cuts the lead. O'Neill, the attacker, at five foot six, coming in to make the goal. 25-46 remaining, second half. Last year, these two teams, they needed overtime to settle the game. Worcester came out on top, 15 to 14. 
BW looking to improve on a 9-7 and seven record as Hannah Stein wins another draw control, plays it off on a little flick over to Bree Martineau. Now it's back to O'Neill. O'Neill on that wing, up to Martineau, slings the pass over to the left side. Martineau now getting it up the top, looks to the right, moves it to the left. She'll shoot. She'll just miss to the right side as there was a stick on it by Katie Scheidler. Another save for her. That will be her eighth save of the game. BW still in control of the ball. Little pressure being put on. Turnover. Grossman picks it up for the Fighting Scots, getting it to Katie Scheidler. Scheidler saving 51% of her shots so far this year. Scheidler trying to look for a long distribution pass. Still hanging on to it. Still looking for somebody in the opening. BW doing good coverage there in trying to slow up any type of pass, and it comes in, and it's picked up by Hannah Stein on the turnover. Stein over to Martineau, top side. She'll go to the right. She looks, and she'll play it goal line extended. Looks like she couldn't get a good shot off. She'll wait for her teammates to start the offensive run. 24-17 remaining, 13-8, Worcester with the lead. BW now trying to just settle in an offense, trying to find somebody cutting through that crease area. On a quick stutter step, Maddie Ray tries to go in, and that one right off the ankle of one of the defenders for, Bita, uh, for Worcester. And it'll be Maddie Ray going into the penalty area. As Ray on the slash. Stoppage in play, 23-58 as they attend to the downed Worcester player. Couldn't get a number real quick. And I believe that was I think it might have been Katie Harvey. So on the restart, fighting Scots of Worcester with it. Cutting through the double team on the quick penalty. Having the ball is Claire Lauthauser out of Granville, Ohio. Passing it up over to Wiley. Wiley on the wing. They'll play it back behind the cage area. Looking to go on that near side post. Trying to find a cutter in front of the uh, cage area. Shaw. Stutter step to the right. Stein blocks her and tries to move her off. Now they'll pass it inside the fan area looking for a left. But there were three white shirts of the Yellow Jackets in there. Now she'll turn, and a push on BW will have a free position shot for the Fighting Scots. Right side of the fan at the 8-meter area. They'll back it off, trying to go in, try to get the defense sucked in. Now they get it to Grossman inside the 8-meter fan area. She'll play it back out to the 12-meter arc. Grossman still in control. Passing it. Goal line extended right. Goes in, plays it back. BW trying to get some kind of turnover now. Coming in on a shot. There's a foul on BW. Another free position attempt. Six of seven for Worcester in the game. It'll be Caitlin O'Connor on the attempt. O'Connor coming in. Saved by Hildreth. 
infraction by Worcester. And BW will get it with 22.40 remaining in the second half. Hannah Stein. She makes some great long runs as she plays it to Martineau. Those two have speed as they try to get through and slice their way through the defensive traffic. Stein on a good 30 to 40 yard run, playing it back to Maddie Ray. Raddick, as they work it up top, trying to work it to the left side, trying to pull the defense of Worcester. Ball loose, picked up ground ball by the Fighting Scots. Quickly on a run, near side, pass up to Schuster. Schuster going against Stein, trying it as she cuts her off on the left, makes a move to the right, and now passes it to the right to Wiley. Clock down to 21 minutes and 40 seconds in the second half. The attack from the near side. Again, the defense coming in, cutting off. You'll see most of the attacks by Worcester coming in on that near side as we're looking at it. That ball goes out of play, and it'll be BW ball. So they're trying to work it on Ashley Hildreth's right side, and that's where most of their scoring comes from is they'll work it to her right as we look at our left and have attacked that left side. Now BW looking for a counterattack themselves. Jordan Paul with it. Good long run. Flips it to the right side. O'Neill in the middle. Looking, going in for Martineau. Couldn't get the shot off. Had an opportunity. And will have a penalty. Stoppage in play against Worcester. And we'll have a free position attempt by Savannah Jekyll. BW with a much needed goal right now if they can get it on this free possession shot. She'll come in, attack, she'll shoot, she'll score. Savannah Jekyll comes up with the goal for BW. That cuts the lead to 13 to nine. Jaco comes up with the goal. And Jaco picks up her second goal of the night. Twenty forty eight remaining in the second half as BW has cut the lead to thirteen to nine. 22 shots, 17 on goal for BW. 19 shots for Worcester, 16 on goal. Katie Scheidler has given up nine goals with eight saves on 22 shots. 13 to nine, our score. Draw control. Picked up again by the all-time draw control leader for BW, Hannah Stein. Maddie Ray with it on the left. Ray trying to come in on an attack on the wing. Plays it to the right side to Martineau as BW facing a 13-9 deficit with 20 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Martineau getting pushed off but still controlling the ball. Looking in the middle, there's a shot. There is a defensive block and a save by Katie Scheidler on a very good pass on the left side. And, boy, she has been playing lights out tonight. And they'll stay, and the referees will say it'll be back to BW with the restart. BW getting ready as the ball's back behind the net area. They play it off to Martineau. Playing it up on the uh, top area. Maddie Ray tries a spin to her left, still in control of the ball. Now turns with the right side, looks for a shot, goes up high. And that one goes off the stick of Scheidler and into the net as it crosses the goal line. And it's a 13-10. 
lead for Worcester as that ball hit off of Scheidler. It looked like she got the save, came out of her stick and out of the net and goes crossing the goal line and BW picking up a very important goal and they got it the hard way today on that one as Katie Scheidler has been just playing lights out and comes up with a big mistake and BW now cuts the lead to 13 to 10. Maddie Ray coming up with the goal. So BW getting life down 13 to 10. Need to control the final 20 minutes of the second half. Ground ball picked up by Ray, lost it, tries to keep it in play. Stein still battling for it, and it'll be Worcester ball. Just under 20 minutes remaining in the second half. Worcester with a 13-10 uh, lead. Grossman playing it on the right side to Borsma. Now this is where the BW defense needs to tighten up, especially on those goal line extendeds as the uh, fan area. Hannah Shaw up top, trying to get drawn off. There's a shot wide left. Goes out of play, still will be in possession of Worcester. Trying to get inside, about five yards outside of the crease area. That's where Worcester has been effective. Referee calling for a stoppage in play. Referee explaining it over to the scores table. And I'm wondering if BW didn't have enough people in that fan area. So Worcester getting the restart. Grossman right side. Goal line extended right. Behind the net, trying to go on that near side. Now works it to the right. Has to back off. Good defense there. Trying to go in. Gets cut off. Mellis. Working it up top. Gets cut off. Goes to the turf. Ball knocked out of her stick. BW coming up with it is Savannah Jekyll. Now she'll just go off to the races. Jekyll running down, has a player to the left. Now coming in, looking to angle on that slide, playing it to the right to Martin. No bad pass, comes off the front of her stick. Now it's Worcester coming in, giving long chases. Moyura Riley. Wiley on that left side, finally being met up, gets a cross check. Tries to flick it in on the near side corner, up in front, and a goal is scored as Alexa Mellis was left open in front of the crease area. 14 to 10, Worcester with the lead. Alexa Mellis. Alexa Mellis now with her seventh goal of the game. Seven goals on eight shots. What a night for her. BW down 14 to 10 here. This game was delayed by almost 45 minutes as about a half hour before the start of the game at seven couple of lightning strikes delayed the game during the warm-up time and so they had to delay the warm-up time to about 7 10 and then it wasn't until 7 45 that we got this game underway here and this wasn't the only delay of the game this game was supposed to have been played on Saturday and snow forced a postponement as snow really hit the Northeast Ohio area late last week and it's all melted. 
again inside the crease area trying to find that pass and they get it on the near side post and another goal for Worcester as they just are attacking the near side post. Caitlin O'Connor on the goal, Ashley Borsma with the assist, and they really are hitting that near side post of Ashley Hildreth. And the thing is, they're getting open shots there because there's no defenseman to help out when they get near the goal circle area. 15 to 10. Yellow Jackets down by five. And you got to wonder if the delay kind of took them out of their rhythm in their pregame ritual and their pregame warm-ups when it was delayed. So instead of being ready from 6 to 7, they had to get ready from 6 to 7.30. And again, Worcester coming in. There's a save by Ashley Hildreth as she takes it down low and gets a stick on it. But Worcester coming up with it. Wiley in the middle. Ball gets loose. It'll be picked up by Hildreth. They'll reset the clock. Hildreth playing it up over to Jekyll. Savannah on a run. Good long 20, 30 yard run. Still going on that far sideline. Talk about a 60 yard run before she passes it back over to her teammate. And it looks like we are going to have a yellow card penalty on Grossman. So Jenny Grossman will come out. That'll stop the clock with 17.28 to go. Grossman will have a seat in the sin bin. And BW will have the advantage. Ray working it to the left side. Up over to Bree Martino. Martino takes a little jog to the right. Slows it down. Gets the left-handed pass up top to Jekyll. Jekyll playing it back behind the uh, goal line extended right. Looking for somebody cutting through the fan area. Ball gets wide away, but Martino was able to track it down near the blue line. And we'll have a stoppage in play. 16.50 remaining in the second half. BW down by five. BW will have a free position shot near the top left of the arc. Coming in, shooting, and scoring is Jordan Paw. Jordan Paw getting her goal on the night. And her first of the night, and for Jordan Paw. That's her third goal of the season. Four points for her to include one assist. Paw out of South Lyon, Michigan. Cuts the lead back down to four again for BW. So BW cutting the lead down to four, 16.35 remaining. Draw control. They'll redo it again. Nope, it'll be Worcester getting it. Little shove on the foul being called on Maddie Ray on the check. Worcester now with a four goal lead and control of the ball. 
You see the way they position. They really hit that near side post. Defense has really got to get those attackers out of there. Harvey to the right side, getting checked, comes in, shoots, and scores as she goes top shelf. Our Worcester is just on fire, leading it back up by 5, 16 to 11. Katie Harvey picking up her second goal of the evening. Her third goal on the year. 16.03 remaining in the second half of action. And BW finds themselves down again by five. Ashley Hildreth with four saves on 22 shots faced. She has given up 14 of the 16 goals scored by Worcester tonight. Draw control. Picked up by the Fighting Scots back in their own defensive end. And a hard shot by Hannah Stein taking down Hannah Shaw. And Stein will have a seat in the penalty box. So Stein coming up with the penalty. And BW will be a player down. As Worcester looks to restart the offense. Ball whistled in play. Paw trying to get a check to slow down the advancement of Hannah Shaw. Her pass on that far side of the field as they got that to Lauren Hill. Now nobody there on the defense. There's an opening right in the middle. There's a shot and a score as they found Katie Harvey in the slot. The defense was very uh, late in getting back they went after the attacker on the wing somebody was up the middle and uh, there was just an odd man advantage and Worcester now takes a six goal lead at 17 to 11 as they catch the BW Yellow Jackets defense uh, looking at the paint dry and a timeout is called on the field with 1535 to go in the second half Tonight's Yellow Jacket women's lacrosse game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. By Papa John's Pizza in Berea, the official pizza provider of BW Athletics. Call them at 440-891-1900 or go online at papajohns.com. By the Oswald Company for all of your insurance and risk management needs. Tonight's game is also being brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings in Medina, Strongsville, and Warrensville Heights. Buffalo Wild Wings, the ultimate place to get together with your friends to watch sports and eat wings. And by Jimmy John's in Middleburg Heights. We're freaky fast, so your sandwich arrives freaky fresh. You can give them a call at 440-625-0745 or go online at jimmyjohns.com. And by the Crown Plaza in Middleburg Heights, when you are looking for a quality place to stay before or after any Yellow Jacket contest, you can choose the Crown Plaza. And finally, tonight's Yellow Jackets lacrosse game is being brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the health care provider of Bolden Wallace University. Adam Mendoza along with you here. 15.35 to go here at Trestle Field as Worcester leads it 17-11 to 11 in, uh, in this matchup. Worcester has had a 4-5 to five and now extending it to a 6-goal lead. 25 shots each for both teams. Shots on goal 21-20 to 20 in favor of Worcester. 6 of 7 on free possession shots for the Fighting Scots to 3 of 4 for BW. 9 saves for Katie Scheidler. 
four in the game for Ashley Hildreth. BW with 15 draw controls. Worcester with 14. 22 turnovers by the Fighting Scotch, 21 by the Lady Yellow Jackets. The fouls, 13 to eight in favor of BW. And cause turnovers, BW has caused six turnovers. Worcester has caused five of them. As we get ready for the draw control with 15.35 to go here in the second half of action, BW needing to stop and really start putting the pressure on Worcester in the final 15.35 as Bree Martineau getting ready on that draw control. She'll pick it up as she lost it. Paw looking, Stein fighting for the ground ball. She picks it up. Works it on the near side after she got put into the penalty box. Hannah Stein plays it over to Martineau. Martineau on the double team. Quick foul now on the quick restart. Referee saying let's bring it back to the blue line area for BW on the restart. Jordan Paul will start walking it up towards the 12 meter line area. On the near side to O'Neill. O'Neill goal line extended right, now playing it back. Tries to go right, now comes back to her left. Looking for a pass up the middle. There's a shot and a score on a good interior pass from the backside as BW cuts down the lead to 17 to 12. Jaco with the goal, O'Neill with the assist, and a beautiful setup there as O'Neill was in the back area and saw Jaco coming in alone in that slot. Flicked the ball to her, she flicks it in, and it is a 17 12 Worcester lead here with 14.50 to go in the second half of action. Now, if BW can just get fired up on the defensive side and put that pressure on Worcester here in the final 14.50, down by five. Still lots of time in this second half, but BW is going to have to put a little more pressure on the Fighting Scots. Free position, and the ball is picked up by BW Savannah Jekyll, who scored that goal. Jekyll trying to go through the heavy traffic, being pushed away by Wiley. She'll stop, looks for the pass, off to Chamberlain. Martineau working it on the white ring. Looking to go inside, now backs it off a bit. BW down by five, needing a big goal here to gain a little bit more momentum. Martineau trying to go inside the crease area. Gets hit across the face. Still has control of the ball. Now plays it off to her teammate. O'Neill back up top. Ball goes out of play on an unforced error. Katie Scheidler of Worcester, who's been minding the nets tonight in a great fashion, has it, trying to find somebody on a distribution. Looking for the long pass. It is on the connect to Katie Harvey. Harvey up to Grossman. Grossman now on a run. Stein comes back on defense. Still, Worcester has the numbers as they go with a 2-1 rush. Now they get it back by the post area. Nice intercept there by Ashley Hildreth. She came in and intercepted the pass that was going into the slot area. Now BW looks to counter. They'll pass it on the near side of it to O'Neill. O'Neill now charges up the middle, has Martineau to the right. Goes in, left of the fan area. Goes in, shoots, can't get it as it bounces around the cage and does not go across the goal line. She came in on a good charge and couldn't get that one to fall through. The 
Yellow Jackets still with control of it as that ball hit the near the far side post and the back side post. And there's another shot attempt being made by Maddie Ray. And Katie Scheidler just came in and took that one out of the air. Now Grossman getting a long pass as they have the attack numbers. They try to get it to Murray. Murray inside goes in, shoots, and scores. Just when you think BW is getting a little bit of momentum, there's a fast break and a counterattack, and Worcester gets it on the board, and they take an 18-12 lead. Boy, the ball did not bounce the way for BW on that last shot as it hit the far side post, crossed over to the near side, hit the post, and did not cross the goal line at all. 12-22 remaining in the second half of action. And the goal by Worcester. Gives them a gives them an 18 to 12 lead. 25 shots for Worcester, 21 of them on goal. Again, the lead is back to six for the fighting Scots. Bree Martin, a winning the draw control, lost it, but picks it up and regains possession. Being chased by Wiley on that far left wing. Playing it up top over to Raddick, but the ball got away from her. Paul comes up with it. Now they'll play it to the right side over to O'Neill. O'Neill goal line extended right. Back up over to Jekyll. Jekyll looks to go on a slide, going in, shooting, and another block and a save there by Katie Scheidler. What a match for her tonight. But the foul goes against Worcester, and it'll be a free position shot for Savannah Jekyll. BW on free position shots, three of four. Can really use a goal on this free one. Jekyll attacks up the middle, shoots wide. Wide to the left. Clock down to 11.45 and still counting. BW down by 6, 18 to 12. BW still in control. Martino trying to attack, but there's three defenders for Worcester to close it up at the top of the fan area. Bad pass off the stick. Now it's picked up by Raddick. Raddick tries to go in. Martino and we'll have a free position shot on the right side of the arc of the fan. They'll say Martino will have it straight up top. Martino needs the quick start and to try to get that goal in there as Katie Scheidler digs herself in in that goal area. There's a shot. There's a score. She goes down low as Martino picks up another goal for BW. Martino picks up her fifth goal of the night, and the lead is cut down to 18 to 13. Still lots of time available, but now it's going to be very important for BW to slow down Worcester. This is where BW gets caught. They'll get a goal, Worcester will get it, and they'll come back and score within a minute or so. They need to keep the attack and the keeping up the pressure on the Fighting Scots here in the final 11-14 as Worcester leads it 18-13 after the Martineau goal, her fifth of the night. And for Martineau, 11 goals on the year along with two assists gives her 13 points on the night. Now Worcester with it, again playing it to the right side. Trying to work it in that area about five yards out, working in front of the crease area. Again, now there's a defense, there's a shot, there's a save, ball is loose, picked up by Hannah Stein. Hildreth will get it now, looking to clear it out.
speed up. You're trying to <clears throat> take their time and clearing out the defensive zone. Hildreth, way out, almost 20 yards away from the goal line area. Pass up over to Bree Martineau. Martineau still with control of the ball, working it on that left wing. Yellow Jackets on the attack. Trying to flick the ball off to Savannah Jack Jekyll. She'll pick it up on the ground ball, passing it to the right side to O'Neill. O'Neill cuts right now, moves to the left, in the center, looks to go in, gets the ball knocked away, still loose in front of the crease area, and it'll go to the Fighting Scots. So now the Fighting Scots trying to counter, almost getting the steal, but coming up with the pass is Jill Murray. Murray has a player open in front. She'll shoot, and another save there by Ashley Hildreth as the shot was made by Borsma. They had the numbers again, and Hildreth came up with a very nice save. Now BW trying to look to a counter. 8.58 to go. Martineau racing past the defense. At the top, looks to the right, scoots to the left, now gets cut off, still has control of it, passing it over to the far side, but intercepted by the defense of Worcester. Now trying to go with the counter, we'll have a timeout called by Worcester. Timeout is called with 8.42 remaining. So with 8.42 remaining in the second half, Worcester leading it 18 to 13. BW down 18 to 13 as the timeout is called by Worcester. BW, as we said, needs to really come up and puts a lot of pressure on Worcester in the final 842. Down by five. BW had the lead early on in the game, but then uh, Worcester just got on fire and just kept peppering the netminders of BW on the night. So as we get ready on the restart, Worcester after the timeout, trying to put pressure on BW on the attack. And again, they're getting back and getting by the BW defense. Grossman trying to work it to the wing, tries to angle back as she tosses it across the field over to Alexa Mellis. Grossman up top, tries a little skip move, looking for a pick, 
gets it, goes by. Now they'll play it back. Now comes the attack on the near side, right in front. The defense for BW has to come in and get there quickly. Pass on a quick shot, actually, there by Jenna Grossman, Jenny Grossman. And it goes out of play. And it will still remain with the... with the Fighting Scots. Wiley attacking from the right. Stein cuts her off. Trying to work it close on that near side post. Good defense there pushing out Katie Harvey. Now another Grossman shot good. Boy, that one went before the play clock expired. Jill Murray comes up with the assist. Grossman with the score. And it is now 19 to 13. Worcester. Seven fourteen remaining. As we get the restart on the draw control, battle for it picked up by Jordan Paw. BW down by six. They've seen that lead. They were, they've seen that hill that they've had to climb as Worcester, has, their biggest lead has been six on the evening. Loose ball lost, and the Fighting Scots come up with it. Long errant pass, and it'll be picked up by Ashley Borsma. She still tries to dribble that ball on the far side. Passes it again, gets by. BW trying to quickly counter. Raddick with it. Plays it to the left. Martino on the wing. Looks for a teammate. Walks it up a bit, about 5 to 10 yards. Now goes goal line extended left that they play it back behind the net area. Start the offense from the backside on the invert. Raddick right wing. Approaching. Moves it to her left. Plays it back to the right. On the quick pass over to Maddie Ray. Looking for a cutter. They get it up top. Jekyll with it. We'll have a free start position. Free position shot for BW on the left wing. 6.05 to go. Worcester 19, BW 13. Jekyll comes in. She'll attack. She'll shoot. She'll score. Jekyll with the goal, cuts the lead down to 19 to 14. Trying to climb up that hill little by little, but Worcester. Jekyll picks up the hat trick, her third goal of the night. It's like the hill is just peppered with oil by Worcester, and, you know, the Yellow Jackets trying to get up that hill to get to the summit. But then they slip and fall. Let's see what happens after this face-off and the draw control. Martino going against Hannah Shaw. Shaw came into this game with 23 draw controls. 6.02 remaining in the second half. 19-14. BW down by 5. Draw control is picked up by Worcester. Shaw with it on the pass. Up to Harvey up top. BW employing a 2-3 up top on that defense. Trying to attack on that near side, but the defense comes in. Trying to cut it through on that near side post again. That's where they've been getting most of their goals on the night. 
Shaw with it up top, trying to get pushed off on the check. Ball loose, and it is picked up by Raddick. Raddick trying to clear out the defensive zone. She'll go through traffic. Slices between two defenders. She'll continue her run. Now plays it to the near side over to Martineau. Martineau attacking. Goes through the defense. Has a player to the right is O'Neal. O'Neal on the wing. Goes goal line extended right. O'Neal with the control. Five minutes remaining in the game. BW down by five. Raddick has a goal earlier on in the game. Martineau has a number of goals for BW tonight. Time is now not on the side of BW as we're down to 4.45 to go. Martineau was finding for a cutter. Martineau trying to play it in the middle. Still kept it as it got bounced off the stick of Lauren Hill. Jaco back to Martineau. Martineau comes in, tries to get the attack, shoots, and scores! Bree Martineau cuts the lead to 19 to 15 as she goes low side. Her sixth goal of the night, and Martineau out of Strongsville cuts the lead down to four at 19 to 15. A little patient on the move, and then gets that skip and hop off the turf as Katie Scheidler a little bit upset with herself letting that one go by. 419 remaining and BW has cut the lead to four. BW needs to exert more pressure on Worcester. Remember these two teams played into an overtime game that Worcester won 15 to 14 last year. Worcester last year 16 and two on the year, got to the NCAC finals before losing to Denison. BW last year nine and seven. Both teams with unblemished records, BW at 2-0, and Worcester at 1-0. and And the control of the ball is going to be picked up by BW. Martineau with it. Martineau going on the attack. Looks to pass it on the left. BW passing it up top over to Jordan Paw. Paw now looks to go in, but the defense collapsed. Slows it down to O'Neill, right side. Goal line extended right. Back behind the cage area to the left side. Ball loose on the turf as Lauren Hill comes up with a loose ground ball. Error and turnover by BW. Really can ill afford that with 335 remaining in the contest. Jones sending that up and a hard hit there by Hannah Stein taking down Katie Harvey. And it'll be Worcester ball with 3.22 to go. Defense needs to come up with an intercept and a turnover as Grossman plays it to the left side to Caitlin O'Connor. O'Connor trying to go in, but there's a double team on the defense. Harvey right side. Passes it back behind the net. Now they attack near side. BW coming in on the uh, push off. There's the double team. And we'll have a free position shot for Worcester with 2.55 to go and Worcester up 19 to 15. It'll be Ash Ashley Borsmer with it. Hildreth hoping to come up with a stop. Borsmer awaiting the whistle, comes in. She shoots as Ashley Hildreth comes up with the save. And the ball, she made the stop as the ball went inside her mask. She made the stop and it went underneath and inside her mask. So she did everything she could to come up with a stop. 2.44 to go. BW needs to attack and attack quickly. Hildreth looking for a pass downfield. Gets it off on a nice pass to Prather. Up ahead looking for Martineau. Martineau trying to scoop up the ground ball. Her and O'Neill chasing for it. O'Neill picks it up. O'Neill trying to slash her way through. 
Slows it down and plays it to Martineau with 2.18 to go. Down by four. Martineau looking for somebody in the slot area. Martineau up to Raddick, who has a goal in the game. Raddick goal line extended right side down by four and two minutes to go. Martineau with it. Walks it slowly to the right side. Time is not on their side. Martineau now comes in looking to go. And she shoots, and that one is a block, and it goes out of play. And it'll be Worcester ball as Martineau tried to go quickly on a wraparound there on the near side post and couldn't get that one to fall through. 140 remaining in the game. BW down by four, and Worcester with control of it. BW needs to come up with a turnover, get the ball out of the stick as Grossman plays it up over to Borsmer. Borsmer now working it on that right wing. Looks to go back as they'll try to counter an attack on that near side post. There's Ashley Hildreth trying to intercept any pass into the middle. Borsmer working it in. She's going to bring it back out with a minute 15 to go and a four-point lead for Worcester. Ball played out on the near wing near the 12-meter line. On a spin is Katie Harvey. Spins right, spins left. Now they'll pass the ball out. 46 on the shot clock. A minute left on the play clock, on the game clock. There's a shot and a pass, and we'll have a foul. We'll have a, re, a free position shot on that right side as the clock stops with 55.2 seconds to go. BW down by four, 19 to 15, as Katie Harvey will get ready for the free position shot on that right side. Harvey awaits the referee's whistle. Worcester with a 19-15 lead. She'll come in on the attack. She'll shoot. She'll score. That should about do it as the lead goes back to five as another free position goal for the BW Yellow or by the Worcester Fighting Scots as they come up with another goal and take a five-goal lead at 20-15. Worcester has been able to withstand a lot of the BW attacks tonight. Worcester up 20 to 15. Fifty point nine seconds to go. Barring a miracle. Worcester will go to 2-0, and and BW will move to 2-1. and Anna Stein with it. 50 seconds remaining. BW looking to make a quick attack. Stein on the right side, goal line extended. Up the middle, passing it in there, trying to look for one of their attackers. Couldn't get it. They lost the ball, and it's picked up by the Fighting Scots of Worcester with 30 seconds to go. Ball loose in the midfield area near the circle. Four white jerseys there. That'll stop the play, but the clock continues to roll down to 20 seconds. And the Fighting Scots of Worcester, all they've got to do is maintain control with a 20 to 15 lead. Coming in on a late attack, Worcester looks to hold and play it back out with nine seconds to go. Clock is down to three, down to two. And that will be the ball game as Worcester comes up with a 20 to 15 win here at Trestle Field as Worcester now has won two straight over BW, one at home and one on the road. BW wins, uh, BW loses this one 20 to 15 to Worcester. Just a reminder on BWYellowJackets.com this weekend, you'll have NCAA round one and two action as the Yellow Jackets uh, host the first and second rounds here in the Division Three Women's Basketball Tournament. I'm Adam Mendoza saying the final score, Worcester 20, BW 15. Thanks for joining us on BWAthletics.com. <laughs>